building on the success from AX1 and 2, now 3 has over 30 experiments and some of them returning customers. Lucy, good to have you back. This is one of my favorite parts of the pre-launch broadcast because we get to talk about all the science that's happening. There's so much happening. It's over 350 hours of research, Absolutely. which is great. But do we think like this This is going to help us here on Earth? Does it really? Absolutely. So everything the crew is doing, it has huge benefits, not only for space flight and advancing exploration goals for humanity, but a lot of the research they're doing is really based on benefiting humans down here on Earth, whether it's healthcare, medicine, different kinds of technology applications. Everything they're doing has really tangible benefits to science and technology back down here on Earth. If you had to summarize each of the country's portfolios, how would you do that? Italy. Give me some Italy, words. Italy. They are doing doing some fantastic technical applications for the Italian Air Force, mm -hmm. uh, and they are doing uh, some really advanced biomedical research as well with some uh, of their companies that they're working with. Excellent. Turkey, it's all about bringing all of Turkey together. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Turkey has a truly national portfolio. They have everyone across the country getting involved, uh, from researchers at universities all the way down to school children. ESA and Sweden, what's their portfolio looking like? ESA has a very strong focus on uh, research for advancing technology for exploration. So they have lots and lots of really cool technology demonstrations that are going to help human exploration in space in the future. And tech demos as well. Is, do, you, do you as chief scientist, is that tech demos a different thing or is it then research or all part of the same wonderful pot? They're very much part of the same pot. So all the technology demonstrations that take place are built on a lot of research and they often feed into future research that will take place to keep crew safe or to benefit human health here on Earth. Okay, so let's dig in a little bit de deeper starting with Italy. They have the I ISOC services for the ISS. Tell me a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so this is a project from the Italian Air Force, which is the Italian Space Operations Center, where mm -hmm. they've developed some software that's actually going to be analyzing debris in space. Which is a huge problem. It's a huge problem. We need to know where stuff is going and stuff is flying so that we can make sure that the space station is out of the way of those kinds of impacts. So that software is also going to be doing some space weather forecasting to help keep crew safe in future. Space weather forecasting? Yes. Looking at different kinds of space weather from solar flares, for mm. example, that can actually release damaging radiation that can not only damage human cells, but can also damage the electronics in a spacecraft. So you want to avoid that when you can. Makes sense. Beta amyloids aggregation updated. Yes. This is, and this is about Alzheimer's research. Exactly, exactly. So beta amyloid is a protein that aggregates together. It forms clumps. It forms amyloid plaques that are found in the brains of humans with Alzheimer's. Hmm. If we can understand how those aggregates form better, which we can use microgravity to really investigate that, then we can gain insights into the Alzheimer's disease and how this terrible neurodegenerative disease can form or potentially how we could even treat it. And you talked about that weather forecasting, which is part of radiation. That's a big part. So briefly tell me about the Italian portfolio with, with radiation research. Exactly. So they have got some uh, light ion detector soft, uh, hardware that they have uh, built that is going to be uh, analyzing the real-time radiation risk from this kind of space weather. And we also have some companies that have got some advanced materials that they've developed that is uh, designed to shield from some of this radiation in future. Okay, let's talk about the country of Turkey's research portfolio, the Turkish Space Agency, otherwise known as TUA. They have 70 types of diseases that they're going to be researching with AI technology? Yes. So they they have a really cool project called Vocal Cord, okay. which has developed, uh, it's an easy to use telemedicine application where the crew actually cough or speak or make vocal noises into an iPad for recordings. And the AI software is then actually able to analyze that and can be used to detect or diagnose infectious infectious diseases, uh, potentially even cardiovascular diseases in future. Wow. Very cool. Partnerships are a big deal with Axiom Space. All of these countries are partners with us. And Turkey is working with JAXA on one of their research projects. Tell me about that one. Exactly. So they're working on a very cool project using the JAXA's electromagnetic levitating facility where they are melting and then re-solidifying some metal alloys in a way that the, the metal alloy floats in space. Wow. So which helps us understand more about the molecular structure of these alloys and helps us understand understand more about materials research, that we can then take that knowledge and apply that to industry back down here on Earth. And ESA and Sweden looking way into the future. Their research is focused on humans in long-term space 
situations. Tell me about their research projects. Exactly. So one of their projects is called Orbital Architecture, which is a really fun one. They're investigating what the effect of the uh, very busy and crowded environment of the International Space Station is, not only on crew uh, cognitive function, but also on the crew's stress responses uh, and also their neural responses. So yes, as you can see, that the ISS is, is very, very busy up We there. were talking about that. It's, it <laughs> seems very crowded. It's very crowded. So this investigation is going to be understanding in different parts of the space station. For example, if you look out the window, if your stress response goes down, do you then perform better in space? And how can we then apply those technologies, not only for future space flight, but also for engineering and building design back down here on Earth? There's also a great one on Simon. Now, my question is Simon. Is it more like HAL or TARS? So it's uh, a bit more like TARS okay, because, good. because okay. I'm a big fan of the Martian. But uh, yeah, so Simon is the crew interactive mobile companion. Here he is flying through space. So uh, this is an AI guided tool that is free flying on station that can help crew with tasks while they're up there. So it's actually going to be helping Marcus do a physical sciences investigation for ESA while he's up on station. Awesome.